Like for me, if I'm going to ask myself, why should I take my faith seriously? It's because God is not content with anything other than my best for him. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I'm here with Emil. Emil has been away for a holiday. So how are you yeah. doing? Well, thanks. Good. How was your holiday, man? Amazing. Yeah. I really need one as well. Yeah. What was the best part of your holiday? Um, I guess it was just the freedom of just doing whatever you want. Yeah. No yeah, like work. No, no work, schedule. Nothing. Just do whatever you want. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah. That's great. Uh, well, it's good to have you back, man. It's um, good to be back. And this is a topic that you've chosen. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's basically we want to speak about how seriously we need to take our faith. Yes. Um, and this might be touching a bit on the lukewarm side of things, yeah. right? Where people might have a, a very shallow perspective on God's holiness mm -hmm. and how we should live. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something that we gotta, we're going to be touching up on. But yeah. why do you think as a Christian... It's important for you to take your faith seriously. Um, well, taking our faith seriously is is practically the beginning of our of our step in accepting Christ is having faith in Him. If we don't have faith in Christ and if we don't take it seriously, then we're not taking Christ seriously. We're not taking our salvation seriously. We we're not. It's it's like you're trying to save up for your retirement, except you're not putting any money in in the bank. And you expect to survive at the end. It's not doesn't make sense, right? If you want to have a good retirement, you have to take your savings seriously. It's the same thing with this. If you want to have a good uh, retirement from this life, then you got to take your faith seriously. Yeah, a lot of people might be thinking saving. What What are you talking about? What's that <laughs> <laughs> in today's economy? Yeah, yeah, true. Eh? Um, I I think as you as you mature, since mm -hmm. you brought up that example, as you mature, you start to see why taking things like that serious is important for your life absolutely in, yeah. in the long run um i think we can start maybe even with jesus taking us seriously yeah and and i think that's a, as a, as a faith as as a religion as christianity yeah it's important for us to be like okay if jesus took me seriously that he went to the cross for me mm -hmm. then me carrying my cross meaning that is a very serious and hard job to do. Yeah. So it's the idea that, okay, I like what Jesus has done for me. I'm happy with that. That's great. He went the extra mile. He did the craziest thing for me, left his throne, died on the cross. That's the craziest thing you could do for anyone, yeah. right? Uh, but then I'll get to see Jesus on Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I might have a few little bad habits in my life and that's OK with me because I don't need to improve my spiritual life. I think where I am now, I'm content with. And, and I've seen a lot of people have that mindset. It's a trap. Yeah, it's a trap. And I want to get your idea as to why you think it's a trap. But the, the thing is, they they think that God is content with that. <clears throat> like for me. If I'm going to ask myself, why should I take my faith seriously? It's because God is not content with anything other than my best for him. Mm -hmm. You hear me? It, we as human beings, we have limitations. I get that, right? We can't do what Jesus did. No. I, I get that. But then what we can do, that's what God is expecting from us as Christians. And not only that, is we're not doing it by our own strength. That, that, that's, that's amazing in Christianity, is that God has given you his own spirit. And his spirit helps you accomplish the calling of Christ in your life. Mm -hmm. So for someone to say, I can't take my faith seriously because I can't do this, this, this and that. I'm like, hold on a sec. If Christ called you to do it. He'll equip you to do it, and he'll give you the strength to do it. He's giving you his spirit to accomplish that. Okay. So that that's my perspective on it. But w why do you think it's a trap? That that perspective of being lukewarm and being content with it. 
Well, I'll give you an example and uh, based on your answer, because um, I came up with an answer to this question and based on your answer, then you'll know why I think it's a trap. Would you say that you have faith in Christ if you do not live like him? You do not listen to what he wants. You do not do as he says. You don't do as he commands. And you live your life just like anyone else that doesn't believe in him. Hmm. No, I, I wouldn't say I've been born again. No. There, there's no change. Your in faith me. is dead. Your faith is yeah. fake. It's just a belief. I believe he's there. So do demons. Hmm. And they tremble. And yet you do not. So what different are you? You're worse than them, in my opinion. So that was the conclusion I came up with when I was observing myself mm. as a lukewarm Christian. And I had a decision to make, and you told me to decide. You said, hot or cold, mm. choose. You're wasting your time living your life lukewarm. Either be in the world or be with Christ. Make the decision. Because right now, God will spit you out of his mouth. You're not hot, you're not cold, you're just useless. You're useless to the world, you're useless to God. Just pick a side. And I picked a side, right? I had to make a decision. I looked inwardly and I didn't like what I felt, didn't like what I saw, didn't like who I was. Because who was I? Nothing. A failure. Neither hot nor cold. So I made a decision. I said, you know what? I'm going to go all in. I'm going to go all in for Christ. And that means taking my faith seriously. Now, I have to admit, it wasn't something that just spontaneously happened where I just changed to a saint. No, it's, it takes time. I'm, I'm becoming a new person. I'm, I'm taking steps, just how I took many steps to go down the wrong path. I took many steps back to where I was and eventually kept going with Christ. Hmm. It's, it's a journey, yeah. but Christ is with me. I'm not alone. It's tough. Sometimes it feels like he's no longer there, but no, it's just my faith is lacking. Yeah, and I just have to persevere, and it builds character. That's great. When you said sometimes that you don't feel Christ is there, I think that might be another. I, I guess you would say another excuse oh, to why people don't take their faith absolutely. seriously. Absolutely. To to say that because like, some people, <clears throat> and, and it's a very shallow perspective, right? There's ignorance in it. Mm. I'm giving everything to Christ, but He's not doing anything, right? Like, I'm fighting this temptation. I'm trying to live a holy life. I'm trying to serve him. I'm trying to be in the fellowship with the church. But he's not there. It feels like I'm the only one that's fighting for the relationship. Yeah. And I'm like, man, there's a lot of ignorance in that. There's two things that never rest. Christ's love for us and our excuses <laughs> for why we shouldn't love him. Yeah. 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 It, but when we were younger, right, and, and you said, like, you said to me, you got to choose. That was a big thing for our group, yeah, right? It was. As a young Christians, and we were like early 20s yeah. um, and teens, it was all about, are you here for Christ? Are you going to pick up your cross and follow him? Or you want to be out of this? Yeah. I remember a lot of people would come to us and they said, oh, but you're pushing a lot of people out of the church. I said, no, no, no. We want everyone to stay, but we don't want to entertain the goats. Mm. Jesus is going to come one day. He's going to separate the sheep and the goats. Okay? Yeah. But until then, why do we entertain the goats? If you're not part of God's people, and if you don't want to take your faith seriously, then what are you doing in the church? And what's more slack is, as a leader, as somebody that's leading a group of people, do you want to be telling the goat that yeah he's 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 a sheep when he's not? Yeah, that's at least that's let nice. him let them know what they are. Show them like reflect that mirror onto them, put the light on them, and say, "Look, this is it's not a, it's not about a condemnation. No, no, you're not. You're just saying, look, I love you, I care about you, but this is a rebuke. Yeah, with patience and with love, I rebuke you. It's now, what you do with that, it's your yeah. choice. You can either say, I see my mistakes, I'm going to fix them. And we there for you. or you, And that's what you did for me. You just said, hey, man, you're not living a, as a Christian. You're Right now, if you died, where are you going? I think you know very well. And my answer was, hell. Okay, well, if you know that, you have a choice to make here. And that's the same thing where that's, you know, you weren't saying that because you hated me. You were saying that, look, look, man, I care about you. It's just, 
you don't have, like our time is not like known. You don't know how long you have. So live carefully. Yeah, it, that reminds me because we had a guy. Because we're talking about the same group, yeah. we had a guy that didn't show up for a few weeks, mm. and then we caught up with him, um, me and a few other guys. We're like, oh, we haven't seen you in a, in a few few weeks, and this is what he said. And to me, that was very shocking, but at the same time, I'm like, well, that's true. And this is what he said. He said, you guys taught me not to be a lukewarm. I don't want to be in the church playing a Christian. My heart is in the world and I I'm, I want to be in the world right now. Okay. And and to me it was a very like it was like more like okay, you know the truth now, right? It's a bit of sweet thing. It is. It's like I was so proud of him, but at the same time I didn't want him to be where he was. Yeah. He didn't want to be playing a Christian. He's like But he was honest. Yeah, he was honest. And you know what he said at the end? He said, if I ever decide to follow Christ, I'm going to be coming to you guys to talk to you guys about it. It, Like that was the idea is like you build an environment, not only for yourself as a Christian personally, but also as as a group with your other Christian friends to say, we're going to hold each other accountable and we're going to be serious about our faith. If you're going to play the lukewarm life, where you want to go and enjoy sin and come back on Sunday and lift up your hands and you want to worship God, sorry. God's not happy with it. Neither am I. So you got to get your life straight. I'm going to keep you accountable. Now, if you want to think you're a Christian, where you indulge yourself in sin and come and go to the front row and repent... Right, even though repentance is to stop what you're doing and turn, turn around and move move away from it. But if you're gonna be doing that every Sunday, man, that's lukewarm. That's what God hates, mm. and that's what God's gonna spit out. It's something spitting out something is obviously when your body is rejecting something, yeah. right? Like you're sick, you might have like a phlegm, you you need to spit it out. It's something that your body's rejecting. It's disgusting. And yeah, it's God is saying. I'm rejecting you. Mm. I, I can't have anything to do with you because if you call me father, I'm holy. You're not. And you should be holy too, but mm. you're not. That's the problem. Man. And, and But see, many Christians would see what, hear what we're saying and be like, oh, they're clearly saying that it's it's saved by works, not by faith. Oh, and we're that's not talking not what about we're salvation. Saying. Yeah, we're not, talk, we're not talking about that. It's It's what we're talking about here is... What is faith? What does faith look like? Because like some people think faith just means believing. No, it's not about belief. It's not. It's 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 about surrendering. It's about actually submitting to Christ. It's about I know if I truly know that He is God and He is my Lord, then He is my Lord. Then He is Lord above my life, above my my wants, my needs, and everything. If not, then I don't believe it then I'm lying. If you truly believe he is your God, then you have to be his subject. If you truly believe he's your king, then you have to live by his rules, right? Imagine you're like, this king, King Edward is my king, Yep. right? If he's truly your king, right? And he's your, and someone you're proud of, then shouldn't you be listening to his laws and his rules? Yeah, if and what he going to submit to them, yep. Then if you don't, then you don't really, he's not really your king. You know, he's a king, he's not your king. And that's what that's why I see a lot of Christians saying, "Oh, yeah, I believe I believe in God." You okay? But is he your God? Yeah, he's he's God. No, no, no. Is he your God? Is he your personal Lord and Savior? Yeah, he saved me. Did he though? Because you're still living like you're not saved. Yeah, you're still living the same way. Yeah. So it's not it's not about works. You're not saved by works. It's by faith. But do you really have faith? Do you truly believe? Yeah. There is a practical, obviously, um, side of faith where you see in Hebrews 11, yeah. right? By faith, Abraham left his dad and was living in tents, yeah. right? Why is because he was pursuing God's promise? And he believed in God. Uh, yeah, and he was pursuing a city that wasn't made by human hands. And did did God 
reward him for his works or for his faith? It's, he was justified by his faith, so... Exactly. Yeah. But his faith was shown with what he did. Yeah. With how he lived, with how he moved. Because everything he did was based on his faith. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with us. Everything we do should be based on our faith. If we're not doing anything, then we don't have faith. Yeah. That's a logical conclusion. Now, again, I'm not saying we are saved by works and faith. No, we are saved by faith. That's simple. Right? For by exa- grace through faith. Yeah. Well, of course. But like as in it's our faith in yeah. Christ. Amen. It's through his grace. Yeah. Um, if we don't have that faith then we would live like everyone else. Yeah. And true. if we're living like everyone else, then it works the same way. Then yeah, as human beings, we're different to God, right? Yeah. To God is that you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and that's your salvation, yes. right? Amen. Because it was the work of his cross. Yeah. But with other human beings, uh, that faith is not sufficient for them, right? We need to... Put our faith in a practical way, right? Of course. As James say, right? If your brother comes and he's in need and you yeah. say, God bless you, go on. Um, your faith is of no value to him. Exactly. Now, that's why faith operates differently between us and God and between us and each other. And each other, yeah. Right? So there's there's two different things. The one where he's talking about James is our, is our works to each other and our faith yeah. to each other. Cause Manifesting it, our faith through our works. Through our works. Yeah. But that's not something about salvation there. That was more like if you're truly yeah. a, a Christian and yeah. you truly... And you love your brother. And you love you your, then you show your love. Yeah. If you don't, then you don't really love your brother. You love yourself more than your brother. Yeah. And we have to love each other the same way we love ourselves. Yeah. So if, if you were unclothed and you had the money to clothe yourself, you would. So if I love you as much as me, then I'll do the same for you. Yeah. So either I don't love you, right? Or I love me more than you. Either way, it's I'm not following the law. Yeah. Right? I'm not following what... Jesus commanded so and it's the same way with that's how that's how I see it with our relationship with God and how our faith with God is if if we truly love God then and he's above us he's number one in our life then we will do what he wants we'll do what he needs and because we know he's he, he wants the best for us yeah. so even then it's still for us even then even when we serve him it's still for our own gain really because he lacks nothing yeah he lacks nothing so even our when we're doing things for him we, it's it's for our benefit, so it's still greedy. But he's so magnificent and so gracious and so faithful, even though we not, that he doesn't demand anything from us. That's why I say it's not about works; it's about faith. But yes, but that doesn't mean our faith should be just belief, just believe that he's there. No, 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 that's that's not what saves you. It's when he's your Lord, when he's your Savior, when he is your God, when you believe that, that, that when you have that faith. That he is your Lord and Savior, that he is your God. That's when you're saved. It's not a belief that he exists, that he is a God, that he is a Savior. No, he's your God. He's your Savior. Your personal relationship with Christ is that of somebody that's saved and a Savior. True? Yeah. Uh, So for me personally, the way uh, I view it is that um, Christ is in no need of anything from us. Absolutely. Right? Nothing. So therefore, our faith in his work is sufficient. Amen. That's a Protestant view. Uh, But my faith will not be sufficient, unlike to Christ, is not going to be sufficient to other people around me. Mm. Because Christ is not in need, but others will be in need. Yeah. So therefore, I display my faith through my works. Yes. That's with other people like James too. Yeah. But when you look at like Romans 4, he speaks about that the one who believes and does not work that his faith is accounted to him as righteousness Mm -hmm. why is is because the example that he gives in romans 4 verse 1 to 5 is between abraham and god yeah so it's not about abraham and someone else yeah so abraham believed in god and he received grace and it wasn't done by works but by faith by faith yeah but back to our topic, and we're getting into yeah, work. Getting, yeah. Th- that's actually one topic we can speak about one Definitely. day. Definitely. What if someone comes, you're, you know, you're having that chat with someone, right? You're seeing someone, mm-hmm. you love him, you care about him, um, living a lukewarm life. You're like, Facebook, the sin is full on displ- display between Monday to Saturday. And he puts a verse on Sunday or something like that. 
And you're like, oh man, like, what are you doing here? When you approach that person, you give that chat to them, right? And they turn back to you like, but that's legalism. You're being too harsh. What happened to grace? What happened to Jesus loving us no matter what? Yeah. How, how, how would you approach something like that? Well, the idea that grace is well free, it, it, grace is free. It's, it's freely given to us, but to the point where it's uh, uh, pretty much a license to sin, to live in sin, is a new a new belief. It's not something that's um, true. It's something that's dangerous and something that's not from not from the Bible, from what I see. Mm. Everything I've read in the Bible teaches us that especially Paul's writing, it's very clear that we should not be living in sin, that we are dead to sin, so we should definitely not live in any longer. Even though we are not saved by what we do, by what Christ did for us, that doesn't mean we should just still be, you know, living as that old man. That man is dead. If we're truly dead in that old man and alive in Christ, then we shouldn't be the same person. We should be a different, a different creation, a different creature. Right? If we're truly born again, if we're not born again, then I don't think we're going to be with Christ. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, the difference between taking your faith seriously and legalism is that when you take your faith seriously, um, th there is that space where you're like, okay, you, you've got your personal struggles yeah. <clears throat> and it's part of sanctification, you're going to overcome it. But legalism is like, you've got struggles. You're not perfect. Yeah. Guess what? You're not a Christian. You, you're not Christ-like. You're not saved. You're not this. You're not that. <laughs> so they start to attack you because you're not perfect. Yeah. But bibl biblically speaking in 1 John, it speaks about brethren, Christians. If mm -hmm. we've committed a sin, we can approach Christ and he yeah. is faithful to forgive us. It's, it's part of that sanctification that we continue as we're seeking God's forgiveness we, we continue to be, you know, kind of taking away our old, old self and being put new Christ, right? Like in it's, Romans, it's like a sanctification. It says put on Christ, yeah. It's, it's a process of being made into a new creation, something that's holy and like Christ. Because um, we try to act like Paul, because Paul was trying to be like Christ. Mm. So we try to be like Paul and... Um, and that's what I love about Paul. He's, he's saying, be like me because I'm trying to be like mm -hmm. Christ. So I try to be like him. I try, but it's, it's not something that's for us to reach that perfection, which is Jesus Christ is never going to happen in this lifetime. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. We're going to fail. And that's what sin is missing the target. So I'm not saying that if you miss the target, you're going to hell. That's not what we're saying here. That's definitely not it. It's, it, it's, we're saying is. Just because you missed a target, that shouldn't be the definition of who you are. If it does define you, if you're missing the target as who you are as a person, that means you're never on target. You're always missing and you're okay with that. That doesn't mean Jesus is okay with that, right? Just because you think that's fine, that you think it's normal to be a sinner, to whatever that sin is, if you think it's normal in this life, oh, everyone does it, it's fine. It's just a little sin. No. It's not fine. Christ is not okay with that. But, but our sins should not define us. If, if they become our master, then we don't serve Christ anymore because we can only serve one master. So it's, we all struggle with sins. We've all fallen short. I know you have, I know, and you know I have, right? We, we talk to each other about the mistakes we make and, we probably will make more in the future. Mm. I hope I don't, but I know I will. Yeah. You know, I, I it's 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 something that I, I hate and the Holy Spirit convicts me every time I do something wrong. And I try my best to never do it again. Mm. And I'm sure you do too. But those do not define us. Those little mistakes do not define us. It's Christ who died on the cross for our sins that define us. And that's the difference between a Christian that that falls and gets back up, and a lukewarm Christian. Cool. It's what is that sin? Is it just a momentary lapse of judgment, or is that what defines you? If it defines you, then you're no longer a Christian. I'm sorry. 
Man, you're killing it. Um, we're coming to our close, man. <clears throat> Do you have anything, any last words to say, or you've shared what you had? If you are struggling with sin and you don't want to be a lukewarm Christian, please comment. You don't have to say your name or anything like that. Just say, pray for me and we'll pray for you. Um, if you know somebody else that's in your life that's lukewarm and you want to pray for them, just pray for them, please. And if you want us to pray for you to pray for them, also comment and we'll pray for you as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, look, we're here for you guys. Absolutely. So if you, any if questions, have, anything? Yeah, if you have anything, just put it in the comments and we'll keep you guys in our prayers. Absolutely. Yeah. What What I would like to share, um, I want that's my closing <laughs> thing, is that the Bible says that the wage of sin is death, right? And if you read James chapter 1, James says that a desire leads to sin. And when that sin is fully grown, it brings death. As born again Christians who have the eternal life in our hearts, why are we receiving death through our own sins? Yeah. So I'm just encouraging you to rely on Jesus and say, God, this temptation, this desire, this habit seems to be overwhelming and I don't know what to do with it. I might have been struggling with it for weeks, for months, for years. It seems like it doesn't want to get away doesn't want to leave me but that's that's where you need to come to God in Christ through your weakness he will show and make his power to be perfect because Christ can do it yeah. if Christ called you to live a holy life guess what he's given you his spirit to do so to accomplish that calling in your life Christ is not giving you something that you cannot bear or something that is magical no, Christ is calling you to do something and Christ is going to give you the aid, the help to do so. So hopefully you've been encouraged by it. And please take your faith seriously. Yes, please. It's not a joke. Don't think about God on Sundays. Let God be part of everything in your life. Yep. Everything in your life, in your decisions, at work, in school, in your family, in your marriage, whatever it is. Let God be the center of it. And if you take God seriously, you're going to be blessed by him. And you're going to start see, seeing his hand move in your life. So that's my encouragement for, for you guys. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care.